Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for your mention of Sergeant First Class Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it was an honor to join you this morning at his funeral at, at Arlington along with Representative Gates. Uh, Ranger and Green Beret that it's worth noting has 10 years in the Army uh, before he was killed. He was on his ninth tour in 10 years in the Army. So we're going to talk a lot today about Army budgets and preparing for great war competition uh, our great power competition, excuse me, and the wars that we want to deter, but we cannot, we cannot in this committee, and I know you won't in the Army, forget the wars that we're in right now as we speak. Uh, it, uh, along those lines, I mean, going kind of uh, big to, to small here, top line. Top line's likely to, is, is flat and likely going to stay that way, at least in my opinion. Personnel keeps eating up more and more of that budget in the out years, how do we modernize recap and, and, um, and procure uh, with less and less budget over time? I know that's going to be just a matter of priorities. What are we going to do with and without? It's Congressman, under current um, assumptions of a flat budget, uh, we're faced with either flattening end strength, or tiering the modernization strategy. So that would be within the portfolios choose divisions that you would scale first. Uh, so um, nothing but really very difficult challenges without an increased top line. Yep. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, can you just tell us for a moment, what are we doing to prepare in the Army and, the, and particularly the Guard uh, for, uh, for a pandemic? Uh, that the Guard being down in every single community. Uh, again, you know, being from Florida, I know this first well, and, and still serving guardsmen, will be the front lines, uh, in both preparedness and response. And I just wanted you to, to, to take a moment to, to share with the committee what we're doing proactively to prepare. If I could, sir, I'd also like the chief to comment as well. But, um, uh, sir, over the last couple months, our, our medical research and development community, which is just truly exceptional, uh, Men and women like Dr. Kayvon Majard, who came up to us from the World Health Organization. He's one of three people on the earth that's actually published on the coronavirus. Uh, Dr. Nelson Michael, who was involved with uh, how we faced the Zika and Ebola virus. So we have extraordinary people within the Army Research and Development community. Uh, we've organized against three lines of operation, uh, prevention, de uh, detection, and treatment. On the prevention front, it's, a, it's really a, where is every soldier and family member on the earth? And Vice Chief of Staff, uh, the Army General Joe Martin, leads this meeting every day, and they're looking at where everybody is and making risk-based assessments. Do we turn off exercises? Do we de deploy PCS? Because a lot of this is we're still learning about what happened in China and how will this, will it or will it not proliferate and to, to what extent? So making these choices literally by individual and by unit every day. Uh, so that's the first thing on the prevention front and is in continued learning. Um, we're, we're working on a vaccine. We were t in concert with NIH and CDC. Uh, Dr. Michael is a protege of Dr. Fauci at NIH, so we have great relationships, but uh, they're, they're testing on animals right now. So uh, ultimately get to a human sample within a couple months is what we're looking at, hopefully. That's great. Uh, Mr. And then Secretary, under, if I can just take the rest for the, yes, sir. For, 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 for the record. Uh, this, this committee and a prior NDA commissioned uh, or, or directed a commission on national service, uh, which is due, its report is due in the coming month. Uh, my colleague, Ms. Houlihan, and, and I, along with several of our other colleagues, are, uh, have a national service bill. Uh, this is not a return to the draft. You do not necessarily have to be in uniform. It is national service across the board. And we believe we can incentivize that. I just want to get your assurance that I can't imagine that you would see this as competitive from a recruiting standpoint. I think, in fact, it would be complimentary to have kids uh, out in their community, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Habitat for Humanity. But how do we get back to a sense of leadership, followership, discipline, and doing it with people that don't look like us? And I would think that would be absolutely great for the nation, great for the Army, but I just wanted to, to, to get your thoughts on the record. Uh, sir, any tool that we can have to find the best and brightest talent in the country to serve in uniform or as a civil servant, we'd want to go get them. Uh, so it would be a great opportunity. I'd like to learn more. 
Thank you. If I could just get uh, uh, a question for the record. One, your dependency on space assets. A lot of people don't associate Army with space. And then two, how the National Guard is using its civilian skill set database, particularly in IT and in AI, excuse me, not in IT, but in AI, and in, how is that informing our recruiting for cyber and for, we were just over in the Jake, uh, uh, and, and for the recruiting challenges there. Oh, well, Thank you so much. Thank you both for your service. We'll get on there this month, sir. Rangers lead the Miss way.